think that really what it takes, it just takes one person to direct the scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One person. And if that one person is good at what they do, everybody will end up in line. Fulfilled. Yeah. But when, <laughs> when there is not that one person that can really take charge of the scene, and everybody is, it, it's like chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, so you need somebody to kind of lead whatever is going on. Mm -hmm. And so like you said, if it's a man, woman, woman situation, ideally it would probably be the man to kind of direct what's going on. And you know, it may be one of the women. Maybe one of the women. Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, it has to be somebody to kind of control and lead the thing. Right. Because not everybody is just going to, you know, be the lead. Mm -hmm. True. Because that's going to be real. True. Rough with everybody's the lead and you know directing and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, <laughs> again, <laughs> happy pride. <laughs> did you do anything? Y'all didn't even again, talk about it. Again, I again, again, yeah, me too. But what, again, what did you do? I can not see you. What you do? And why ain't nobody asked me to do nothing? I did like the more sensible things. I wasn't going out to the strip clubs and all that. I wasn't trying to go to the strip clubs. Did you seminar. go to Bravo Bravo to the um I don't even know what that is. Oh, that was the um the club oh you wouldn't know about the clubhouse. The clubhouse was a great club back you in the day. You wouldn't know about the clubhouse. Somebody would talk to them about it. Really? Okay, okay. Well Nobody's ever talked to you about the clubhouse? The only clubhouse I know is New York. Oh, oh well there was one here. Over, yeah. um, across the street from was that Roosevelt? Yes. Oh gosh. Well it's a club and Back in the day, I used to see Puffy there all the time. Like Fridays, I guess, were straight night. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I always say it's never straight night in a gay club, but whatever. Yeah. But um, but Fridays and oh man, it just used to be so live in there. And the music, the DJs really? just would kill. And they did like a reunion this past okay. weekend. And oh, I wanted to go to that so desperately. Oh well, it just didn't work out. So what did you do, Tony? I went to see Keith Boykin down at the um the Hyatt. Keith <laughs> Who's Keith Boykin? He is a uh, CNN contributor. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's openly gay. He gave a little seminar. We'll talk when on Saturday. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, nice. Because Donna and I actually went out on Friday to see um, Rashawn, Rashawn, Patterson? Rashawn Patterson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this place up in um, Bir the Birchmere. The Birchmere. Oh. Oh. Got all backstage and everything, you mm -hmm. know. Did y'all meet him? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Oh. Took no done? pictures. Well, you did. I did. I took a picture. You didn't take a picture. Mm -hmm. See, we saw, we saw, you know. Well, he was on Feel Better Friday earlier that day. Mm -hmm. So then Silver got us tickets to see him. So nice. But he ain't a part of Gay Pride. No. No, I'm just saying what I do. Okay, what the right girl to make that? But I mean that that whole that whole era has kind of passed for me. I'm like, you know. And you know what? It's funny that you should mention that because to me, I said the Black same Friday thing. is just a fuck a fuck fest. Really? Well, <sighs> and I'm past again, all that because I'm more, a little more relationship oriented. I don't want to have sex with again, somebody I, I know I have a sex again because with. Because since when? That's where the focus. <laughs> Well, if, they, if, I bo if that Bonafide know that they live in another, don't stop. <laughs> if I know for one hundred percent that they're gonna live, that they live in another town, that I'm not gonna indulge. <laughs> okay, the last three relationships I've had, oh, one was in Los Angeles, one was in Philly, one, the last one was in Boston. I'm not going through another long distance relationship. Okay, I'm not getting entangled with somebody I know that you know don't live in the DMV. All right. I'm saying okay. That was very patronizing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was but very you, shady. Okay, never, never. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I I totally agree. But I think that's part of what people find um, exciting about it is that you can do it, and it's like it's the weekend goes, so does that, mm -hmm. and it's done, and it's over. Um, so like a lot of people I talked to, they were, I was like, oh, you know, did you enjoy, oh, I had a fabulous weekend, you know, I went here, I went there, I was on Jack all weekend, I was on Grindr, I did this, you know, and so. Jack was lit, I didn't they, know that. Someone <laughs> told me on Thursday night it was lit, I was like, excuse me. I was getting hit about all these strangers. I have a really cute picture on Jack. <laughs> yes, I did. So, you know, I think that people do like that, you know, the fact that 
once it's over, it's over, you know, and it kind of helps to maybe save face for what actually happened. Hmm. Save face for what actually happened? What do you mean? Um, so if you did something really, say, risque or... Um, Inappropriate. That's you? Yeah. Oh, get that old. <laughs> really? Oh, I was going to say. I can't stand pictures like that. Really? That ain't you might that is me. <laughs> you might as well put a dick pic up. It's only when they ask. <laughs> oh, God. Do you do that really? When they ask, oh, yeah. Oh, oh it's like a, um, you have to have it available. No, come on, y'all. Why not? And then there, is it like like when you when people take pictures and when they see it and see you in person and it's sort of like that ain't what your picture look like? Do you oh, know no, 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 no. Well, okay, no, I'm actuality. I'm actuality. Wait a minute, let me show you. No. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. Oh, no. Yeah. So this is what I would say is the difference because I actually wanted to talk about this um, at some point. The use of the dating apps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know because like a lot of people. One of my exes used to say, it's a sex, it's a sex app. Yeah. And I'm like, no. It was not designed for that. True. I said, however, we use it for whatever our purpose is. And yeah, so whatever you design for, that's what it is to you. Right. And because it's that accessibility mm -hmm. to so many people, and we can, you know, we through the people like that, it has like supercharged the microwave syndrome of dating. Yeah, and you know, so yeah. right past can, dating, straight to the bedroom. Yeah. Right, because you can specifically say in your profile, "I'm not into hookups," right. or "I am into hookups." Mm -hmm. You can basically kind of lay it out, and maybe somebody won't read that, and it'll get translated into another into something else. Right, but it's out there in the way that you want it to be out there. And you, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. So, are you on Tinder? I was on Tinder. Met mm -hmm. a really nice guy on Tinder, and it just didn't work out. So. And I don't think Tinder is so much. Well, Tinder. Like well, that was the whole thing. Well, see, well, well, but Tinder right. was becoming that and see, very quickly. That's, that's, but did Tinder have like? Because um, Jack has a. Um, you can unlock pictures and show other pictures of them. Oh. Of yourself. Oh no. Tinder doesn't have that. No. We're, we have a little more advanced. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, yeah, it's so advanced on just Our programmers Jack. are a little more yeah, advanced. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can see the profile pics. Evidently or you can so. see... Wait a minute. Like, he just wanted to open his Jack. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. Now, see, I don't put... <laughs> Now, when somebody opens up my profile, they'll see these three things. Weapons of man. No, call your husband material. Call your husband material. You better work. Yes. But these two pictures are pictures that I would unlock. Now, I could put like the provocative pictures down there, but I just put like regular pictures down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if people want to so see. You trick people when they say unlock your pictures. <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh, no, because they'll say unlock your pictures and I'll put that up there. And they'll, right. say, they'll say whether or not they want to see something and more exactly, specific. Exactly. I said unlock your pictures thinking that it was something provocative in there and you showed me the same two <laughs> pictures. Because I know, right? Two other pictures of my face. I already saw your face. <laughs> I need to see something else. Well, I showed you a different angle. I showed you a different. Is that shaving. important though? Like when y'all on those apps, like no. that is the the thing you kind of want to see the D, no. like before in order to conversate with them or whatever. Okay. No, really. Well, it depends okay. on what you're using it for because like okay. if you like if Tony says like I use mine, I general conversation and sometimes yes it does venture into that realm and then I'm like oh okay mm -hmm. well let me see or a lot okay. of times you can get conversation with people that live a distance away so that's all you can do is conversate. Okay. Okay. That doesn't happen to you? And you never send a DP pic. People have. I didn't say that. But I'm saying. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can have long conversations that mm -hmm. don't go anywhere because the person lives mm -hmm. like a distance away. Okay. Okay. Like yesterday I was talking to a guy in like Wisconsin or something. I was talking to a guy in, in um, Charlotte. So obviously, you know, mm -hmm. there's not going to be any sort of like immediate interaction. But you know what? It's funny that you bring that up because I, um, I think I mentioned on here before how years ago when AOL, you know, the AOL chat room. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I have met people that, like, the intent really was never, it 
actual meeting was never, never a thing. thing. Right, yeah. Right. But then you mean like in the chat rooms? Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Well, it was just mostly know, you, just chat. You chat with somebody and then you enjoy conversation with them and yeah. then you go to the instant messenger. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you're messaging right. and you talk Maybe to that went to the phone. every day. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like I would never venture, well sometimes I would go to the phone but sometimes I don't. Even now yeah. I'm like oh, I don't really want to talk to you. I, yeah. I, I'll, yeah. I'll text you. Right. You. But um and I had people that I had been talking to since I was like 16, 17, 18 that I had not met till well in my 20s. Really? Wow. Because the 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 premise was never really to me. To me. No, I remember and that. And it just yeah. like so happened. Like right. one guy uh, was a DJ in Philadelphia. Oh, nice. And I loved music. I loved house music. So, and I used to talk to him on the phone because I would text him. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm mixing a tape because he played in the clubs on Friday. So he was like, I said, oh, well, let me hear you. So I ended up calling. And so I used to actually call him just to listen to him practice and do what he was going to do just so that I could hear the music. And we cool. had never met wow. until I moved here. Oh. And he took me out for New Year's. Nice. Yeah. But it was nice. Always, but at that point, you developed more of a, a friendship. A platonic whatever. friendship. Well, yeah, I guess. Because you didn't, nothing happened. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. No, 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 no. But I'm thinking like I'm thinking like friendship. Like how? I guess it was a friendship. I'm just thinking like how much friendship but, do you have? Like texting and. But all your initial yeah. conversation was just friendly. It was yeah, never. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Like he thought I was attractive, but he was older than me. So I, you know, we never really focused on what one another looked like. Mm-hmm. Like we share pictures, but it wasn't like. Oh, I'm looking at your picture every day. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, it was just really more conversation, messaging back and forth. I'm keeping you busy while you're at work. I mean, you know, entertain while you're at yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, You're mm-hmm. talking to me. I wasn't working at the time. And so, it it just fulfilled that void. And we just kept doing it. Yeah. That's so, cool. Hats off to Boston. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so, what were your experiences on Tinder like? Um, I meet guys and then they, um, like me for a little bit and then it just fades out. I get ghosted mm-hmm. a lot. Really? <laughs> Come on, it was like twice. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. That was two times too many. <laughs> okay, so what do you think about that? Like, what are your thoughts about ghosting? Have you ever oh, done I hate that it. to anybody? I have not done that to anybody. Okay. So um, when you don't want to see somebody, well, wait a minute, what did, what did, what just happened with, um... <laughs> What's his name? Did you kind of stop talking to him? That's oh, I guess I did. Okay, yeah, well, so but I, it was, it was, I think it was just mutual. So, okay. remember the young man I was telling you about? I can't even believe oh, I right, gave yeah, the cursive yeah. young man choking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I went back. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I went back. Okay. And, um, Do you want this one that like that? I don't care. Okay. I mean, I'm going to tell my business. I'm going to tell, tell other people business. I'm going to tell mine. <laughs> if I'm going to tell on. other people business, I'm going to tell mine. Right. So, um, went back. Hey, George. Right. And, um, don't say call me, he might. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, anyway, um, and, and like, I needed that experience to be a little bit of an escape for me, Mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, I needed an escape. Leave it at that. And so, here again, before I can, he opens the door and grabs me. We're up against the wall, all this kind of stuff. I got to calm him down, right? <laughs> calm him like, down. Got to calm him down. And he's then, a man or a puppy. Right. Well, I mean, he's just very aggressive. Right. He's very aggressive. And so I finally, I'm saying, so we, we're getting busy. And um, he going to that pounding shit again. And I'm like, baby, look, you know, why don't you just relax and let's take our time and enjoy this? Mm-hmm. You know? I, I, you know, we haven't done this, we haven't done this, we haven't done this, and you just going straight in. So there's no four blur. Right. And he said, you know, um, why don't you just be quiet? Ooh. Yeah, why don't you just be quiet? He said, I, no, I wish you would be quiet. Oh. Is what he said. I wish you would be quiet and let me do what I want to do. I feel like you always bossing me, trying to boss me around. And I was like, really? Are you serious? And he was like, yeah, like, you know, let me take care of this. And, and you know, let me take I don't really care, care mm-hmm. what, you know, he said, I really don't care what it is you need right now. Wow. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about this right now. Wow. I was like, okay. Okay. So I'm I done. that number went yeah. 513. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm done. Cause that. I'm done. So I'm going to say it again. 
<laughs> no, no, honest to God, I'm not. I mean, cause like, unlike uh, Candy, I don't need right. it like that. No. I mean, I don't really, I don't need and nobody then, like and that. And then also, well, I guess it could be like Candy. He's told you who he is. Yeah, exactly. Where he is. Mm -hmm. He told me the first what time, and I didn't believe him. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 another, yeah, another, yeah, yeah. Because you had said that you did have a conversation with him, and he was we apologetic. We did, and he was apologetic. And I took him, and mm -hmm. I took him at his word, and I took him at his word. And then, I mean, and that's just the thing, unfortunately, that sometimes happens with women, where you're so flattered that somebody just wants you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, like I, I haven't been seeing anybody on a regular basis, right. and I'm just be honest. I mean, I was, I was taking. I was like, oh, somebody at least want me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Find me attractive, want to have sex with me, seems to enjoy wanting to have sex with mm -hmm. me or whatever. So, okay, you know, that's why I'm going to give you another try. But then, you know, to tell me I wish you would be quiet, I was like, for real though? <laughs> like, for real? For real? And what I need is not important right. to you right now? You don't want to talk about this? So, was he willing to allow you to... No. Oh. He didn't want to talk. He no, didn't. no, I'm saying, you know... To leave, to finish no, the orgasm? To, to no. And that was my other problem. I was like, I let this shit go the first time, but I'm not letting it go a second time. And then it was like, I don't really want to talk about what you need right now. So That's he got it, his yeah. and I was it. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't get his. No, I was like, no, I'm done. Oh, it's you stopped it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, so I'm a wrap. I'm a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'm done. I can't. What's going on with that woman's hair? Okay. Oh, this is funny. Oh. That's now Angela Davis. I mean, yeah. what's her name? Micah Angela Davis. Michaela. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 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 I forget what I messed up. Now, wait a minute. So now we got Tony saying, what's going on with her hair? And you talking about, oh, that's Michaela Angela Davis. Now the people going to be like, who are they up there talking about? The the black activist people. Okay. They just talked about Condoleezza oh, Rice. Oh, gosh. Y'all do. Tony, it's the Kool-Aid crumb. Uh, the coasters. I was about yeah. to say, what is going on? Well, I don't, I don't usually sit here with glasses, so yeah, so mm. I have to get some coasters. And I guess it's the moisture and things. I'll breathe so. Hopefully this is not chicken. Oh, my book. Sometimes. Do the but that was good. Up. That was good. Thank you well, so much for sharing, mm -hmm. Dawn. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, you know, in that oh, matter. Oh, it ain't that big a deal. I mean, you know, it ain't going so, it really is helpful. I need that. Because, see, what y'all don't know about me is, like, when most people did all their little stupid dating things in their 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. You were with somebody. I was with somebody all of my 30s. No, yeah. All of my 30s into my 40s. Or, like, in my 20s, I had, like, a job. Like, a real mm -hmm. job. A real responsible job. Right. So, I didn't really get to date and do things like most people would do in their 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. And so, it's kind of cool in a little bit of a way to be my age doing it now. Because you're a lot more mature. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you can um, rationalize things a little bit right. better than when you right. did in your younger years. But it, it, it does still suck sometimes. I mean, it does still suck. But, I mean, I'm going to get through this. This is good. Yeah, That's a good learning still, experience. You know, I mean... It still must be very difficult if you have a particular goal in mind of being, you know, well, in a see, relationship with somebody. Well, and then you have to waste your time with somebody who, even though they're putting themselves on Tinder, you know, open themselves, appearing to open themselves up to a relationship. Right. And then still reacting like that. Right. It must be very difficult. And this particular guy I didn't even meet on Tinder. I met him in person. But um, what I'm going to say is that is part of my problem, though. I don't know what I want. Ooh, okay. I am a woman that does, I, I don't understand the value of marriage. I don't have a clear understanding of what marriage buys me is what I'd like to say. That I can't, that I'm, like, I'm a pretty happy person by myself. Mm -hmm. I have a kid, you know, I got a place to live, um, good job. And I'm trying to figure out for myself still what value is a man going to bring into my life other than sex? Yeah, but even if it's not marriage, do you don't you have the desire to be in a committed? I'm sorry, I have a, a desire to be. Um, I I have a desire to have a companion who wants to treat me well. Mm -hmm. Um, but with certain boundaries, I assume. Like well, you, but see, but like at this point, you're like you don't want to live with somebody. Well. See, it would, it's a whole lot that goes into that. Like, are you going to be able to live with me with my father, you know, and, mm -hmm. and my father in our household mm -hmm. or even my son for a couple, like, depending on how fast the relationship goes, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, that kind of st like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I, if I can even do that now. I don't know. With my dad with me, I don't know if a man is going to want to take all that on. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm not going to leave my father. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just say my son can't stay with me anymore. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm, I'm okay with a man not wanting to take that on. Um, but even, even before then, it's, even when I was with my son's father for all that time, that was part of the reason why we weren't married because I wasn't asking for it. I wasn't advocating for it. I was just sort of like... We were good. you not advocating because of who he was? Some of it, some of a little bit was like a character issues I had with him. But a lot of it, and I would say that's maybe 20%. 80% was, I don't understand how marriage is going to make this any better. But is that, I assume most of that is the example that you saw in, within your own parents. Yes. Because they, how old were you when they divorced? Uh, 10, 11, 12, something like that. But obviously it had been very tumultuous up to that point. Yes. And you, Probably felt like they should not be together. Exactly. Like, this is what marriage is. Exactly. I don't want exactly. And did exactly. You see, did you see marriage from other people? Like other. I only had one uh, aunt and uncle that were um, happy. happy. Mm -hmm. But remember, I told y'all about her. She was his side mistress for. <laughs> yeah, she he didn't marry her till she was sixty. Yeah, seriously. Okay. Honestly, and he was his side mistress from. A she was her side. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And that was the only other marriage? That was, but they, but I'm gonna tell you that he loved her. I mean, they got along really well. They had a great relationship, except that he was married mm -hmm. and she was a side chick. Mm -hmm. But you never saw any other marriage? No, honestly, family. no. Not that was happy and very productive people, you know, like, a, you, you know, just too productive. Well, maybe that's not true. I did live with my best friend at one point and her parents. But even, you know, even in that case, he has stepped out on her mother. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it's like marriage it equals pain in my mind. Mm -hmm. Marriage okay. equals pain. And I don't I don't want to I don't want to be with somebody that I, you know, I got to take pain from you. But I don't, you don't want see that. relationship as pain, do you? Um, they can be painful. People betray you. People betray you even if they don't mean to. I I've, I've been betraying people when I don't mean to. I mean, it's just tough. So I just would rather kind of like, um, oh, just keep everything on the surface. I'm trying to find this list that I thought was really insightful that I read this morning. It was like 10 reasons why um, relationships don't last. Mm. <laughs> Only 10? Right. Well, and what, the thing was they were really good. It wasn't just like stupid stuff. It was really good. Um... And one of the things that they talked about was like what you said is knowing what you want out of the relationship and yes. what does the relationship mean to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I said, um, I thought about my relationship and I said, okay, because it says, well, when you start a relationship, of course you, it's sometimes you haven't been in a relationship in a while, so you get swept away by the thought. Mm -hmm. uh, finally being in a relationship mm -hmm. being with someone who desires you as much as you desire them mm -hmm. but we know that within a certain amount of time and I think in this it said um, six months was the time before you really start to see who the person is so a person is able to keep up you know the facade of who they want to be that right that represents for right. 6 months or so mm -hmm. before it starts to break down and you see who they really are i don't right. think it, that, that seems like a long time though doesn't it yeah, it is a long time. I think, but that's. I don't think so. You don't think no, so? No, I think, I think that, that that can happen a lot faster than oh, that. Oh, not that it can't, but I don't think that six months is a long time, meaning that. I'm, I'm just saying that a person. On how, how interactive you are with the other person. So, are you like, seeing oh, the person see every day? Mm -hmm. Or do you see them once a week? Mm -hmm. You know, is it maybe twice a month? You know, it can stretch out. And then um, one thing that the, the article was also saying was, you know, having sex clouds that. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, course. regardless yes. of who you may start to see, you know, the sex will cloud yes. all of that going on. Mm -hmm. 
And and speaking of that, because that was the whole thing too with the with the rapist guy. I shouldn't call him that. I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. I shouldn't call you that. But because the rapist would be like you know, yeah, he it was against your will. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, I I just like to say that for dramatic effect. But that was that was a thing. That was always my thing. I was always that girl that kind of rushed to sex. Mm -hmm. And then you're right. You're like then you're having all this great sex with this person, and you're in and thinking it's love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that that was a problem for me. Now, why I think that this relationship with this guy here was helpful is because I really had sex with him and I don't feel nothing. Okay. And I can walk away and I'm good. And I'm like, oh, this is growth. Mm -hmm. This is growth. Like, I'm not feeling like, oh, you know, I got to stay tied him. to him. Yeah, because we had some good D. And blah, blah. No, I'm not feeling that at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy about that, actually. Well, actually That's progress good. for me. That's yeah. progress. Yeah. Yeah. That is because really progress. You have, you're starting to see, or I wouldn't say starting to see, but you see that you want beyond what you were getting. Absolutely. Oh, okay. You should always want more. Absolutely. Well, not always want more, but you should. Absolutely. In that situation, you always more. want more. Well, from what I hear. <laughs> if you're in a situation where you're feeling like, what you're getting is not completely everything that you feel like should be on your plate. Yeah. Then move down the buffet because that's yes, child. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. You buffet. will reach the crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> all the crab legs. I'm like, where's Tony coming up with these? Uh, I'm trying to keep this PC. Y'all the one with all these foul okay. language. Yeah. It's bad enough. I got to bleep out. Names. Right. Names. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But I did really well to get through that. You did. I was Three like, times, oh, I will forget <laughs> these names. I will forget these names. Or maybe it wasn't in this group. Yeah, but I do. I think I want to go back to counseling for that too. For a relationship? Yeah, like I really, I don't understand why I am anti-marriage. Like, I, I don't even know if it's anti-marriage. I just don't understand why I don't understand what marriage is supposed to be. Well, I mean, your child of divorce. I think a child of divorce would know, would, would feel that way. Really? But I want to work through it. Like, well, you know. It, I think that can be part of it, but you have to, marriage, see, to me, and this is where I actually had this conversation with a client, and I think I kind of pissed her off. But I was telling her, I said that, we have to get out of the mindset that, you know, like marriage is, a relationship is, because it isn't. Mm. It is whatever you need it to be for the two of you. So if mm. you say, you know, like Candy, perfect example. For her, she may not want to know that something else is going on, but what's going on is enough for her, even though she wants more clearly, you know, but where she is now is enough of a jumping point for her in her mind to call it a relationship. So now we may call it dysfunctional. We may say that's crazy and girl, you need and a lot more other stuff. Assistance. Yeah. But to her it is, you know, that's her relationship. Like some people look at my relationship and say, okay, now what is going on? But if it works for me and it works for the person that I'm with, then who's to say anything other? Right. And so that's how I, I was telling my client, I said we have to stop trying to put our ideals on other people because we make other people unhappy. Well, sometimes it's hard to do that when you have, when you're, all you know is your experience. Shut right. your mouth. Really? Yeah, but if you start a conversation. Shut your mouth. Just because like we're having a conversation. When I start right? telling you about my relationship and, and it, this is almost like when we started the show and we were talking about placing judgment on people. When I start telling you about my relationship, you have to think, is is that my idea of a relationship? I can share with you what my idea is, but I'm not going to tell you that your idea is wrong. Yeah, but if somebody has opened up a conversation with you about what's going on in a relationship, mm -hmm. the only thing you're going to have a point of reference is what you've experienced. So you can't just sort of like just stop and just listen. No, because listen to what I said though, Tony. You can share what your idea is. But the fact is, you can't tell me that what I have going on is wrong. And that's what people do. Mm -hmm. So they tell, we will say, mm -hmm. okay, Tony is dating this person, but every night Tony is at the club meeting mm -hmm. other people. 
So we say, well, that ain't no relationship. Yeah, yeah well, but I mean, but, getting back yeah. to something that we've already talked about in terms of what was going on with, with Candy. Candace. Candace, 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 What's your point of reference for that? Thing? Right. That's what I mean, right. What's my point of reference? How do you exactly know something that. is going on? How, yeah. Right. What makes you say that something is wrong?